Hey everybody, it's Sandra the left. Can I get a hell yeah! Yeah. So today we're gonna have a little chat. But first, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody for welcoming me back to YouTube. I stopped responding when I was like, I'm gonna go respond to comments because it started bawling my eyes out. I'm a very sensitive gal and I was just too overwhelmed. I'm like, I can't do this. Everyone's so nice. So I really appreciate it. One thing I said in my last video is that maybe you guys know everything and like I don't have anything to teach anymore. But someone brought up a really great comment saying like, how do you refresh stuff? And the wheels kept turning. I started thinking, oh my gosh, there's so that I used to do that I just can't do anymore because skin changes so much and makeup changes so much, trend change so much, we learn things all the time. So today I'm going to talk about how to stop aging yourself with makeup and this is not like oh how to look young, how to be ashamed of yourself for aging, like it's just a path we're all blessed to take. I'm talking about ways that makeup shows stuff that isn't there in the beginning. I usually don't notice stuff about my skin or my face until I'm applying makeup on it. I'm like whoa I didn't know that my pores look like like that I didn't know that you know whatever I feel like stuff shows up more when you apply makeup so I'm gonna show you how to navigate that and how to stop creating shit that wasn't there in the first place I have a really good photo example and it's lighthearted because like it's not like a real makeup look so I have a screenshot of Lizzo who's Marge Simpson for Halloween and I'm sure it's just like for a photo shoot makeup kind of thing. And I have this picture here where her makeup is like cracking around her mouth. She doesn't have wrinkles around her mouth or on her, she has flawless, beautiful skin, like gorgeous. But because of the makeup that was applied, it's like cracking. So that's what I'm talking about with adding makeup that shows that wasn't there before and how your makeup which I think we use to self-decorate can be showing shit that's never been there so we're gonna do like a half and half scenario which I've never done on my channel before because I'm like ah oh, if I'm gonna do a look I want to do a look but I feel like this is important to kind of go through an updated makeup routine and I also will say that you can literally do whatever type of makeup that you want to do I I'm all for that, but here are some ways to make your makeup experience better and make it last longer. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we're going to talk about prepping the skin. I think by now we know that prepping the skin plays a huge role in how our makeup looks and stays. This is the jumbo size of the Ola Henriksen Glow O2H Toner. It's like a gentle, even though it kind of stings when you first put it on, exfoliant day to day. And I feel like this has made a huge difference in my skin and has been okay on my eczema, which I feel like it helps to just keep everything clear, smooth skin texture nice reducing the amount of freckles or sunspots that I'm getting as I'm getting older as soon as I get out of the shower I like to do this and then I have this moisturizer here so depending on what you're doing I'm pretty dry skin this is the strength trainer moisturizer and I'm not doing too much what we're gonna be talking about lots in this video too is the amount and the way that you apply your products I am a hand blender so depending on what I'm doing and how long I need to be out is the amount that I'm gonna put on my face but I typically don't like to put on like a shit ton because there's only so much your skin can absorb and then it's just kind of sliding around especially if you're putting like makeup on over top my skin's really dry I'll do like a thick layer of aquaphor on my face and go to sleep and then wash it off in the morning to really deep lock in moisture but I won't do my heaviest moisturizing before makeup because it just makes your makeup slide around crease separate all that so to keep this kind of balanced and fair I'm going to use the same products on each side but just different techniques I love the idea of full coverage foundation I think everyone at least from my generation thinks that we need kind of full coverage but you'd be surprised at how little coverage you actually need and how you don't need to conceal things that you think are a problem so I like to use a thinner foundation this is the Pat McGrath labs foundation and it's thin oh my gosh I'm so in denial about how I don't have my summer skin but on this side I'm just gonna do straight away thin coverage and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I feel like my skin looks nice. That's just one layer. I'm going to do another layer of the foundation just right on top. Right away. Now, this is a beautiful foundation. I personally love it with fingers. But do you and however you like to apply it. I just think that it melts onto the skin really nice. And you can add a thinner layer. Now, this is a medium buildable coverage foundation. But one thing I did before and I will stand by now is adding highlighter. I've been doing it in the form of powder more so lately. Um, but this adds a layer of coverage. As you can see here, I have some like veins. And this is just kind of deflecting the light. The reason why I love adding a highlighter before my foundation is if you like that kind of dewy skin look, but you have oily skin or even dry skin, 
skin. Dry skin and dewy makeup sometimes doesn't work because the makeup will disappear and fade on the regular parts of your skin and on the very dry parts it'll stick to it and you can look blotchy. This just kind of gives like an even coat like a base but as you can see it's kind of reflecting the light and disguising my veins or any like spots I have on my face. This side looks really great still because it's a great foundation but this just kind of gives you that glowy hydrated youthful kind of look also reduces the look of pores when makeup is put on top of it just like this you could probably see my pores maybe a little bit more than you can on this side wait till I put the makeup on over top my foundation but it's an extra layer of coverage without adding more foundation okay favorite foundation it's nice also to kind of warm it up on your hands and on your skin before applying when you're applying foundation onto your skin it kind of heats up to your body temperature so that's why I, I know that a lot of people like to do their eyes or eyebrows first which is totally fine but whenever I do makeup on clients I'd always do their skin first because I want to see how their skin will react to the foundation to the makeup while I'm doing their eyes and stuff like that and then I can go and correct it or oh maybe they need more powder maybe they need more moisture and I can fix it after so I like to just see how my skin's gonna react at that moment so this side I've got less foundation on and it's just bouncing off the light a little bit more as you can see like kind of my pores look a little bit more less visible than on this side even though it looks great but we're gonna move on okay next we're gonna talk about concealer so this is a concealer I use all the time so this color is called meringue I believe and I think sometimes we think with under eyes and concealer lighter is better brighter all that kind of stuff so this is meringue it has a little bit of a pink hue to it and it's very bright Holy. And sometimes I'll mix it with my other concealer, but I just want to show you that brightness doesn't always lighten your under eyes. So I'm going to blend it really well. This is my favorite concealer into my foundation. And as you can see, even though it is like lighter, it's bright, but it's not really giving the camouflage effect that I want. And my kind of darker under eye circles are going more grayish, which is not the vibe. And I'm going to go ahead and layer on another layer. I'm going to set it with my very most favorite powder, the One Size Beauty, on top top of my wet concealer who want it to be bright so it's quite bright but I don't know if you can see it like on this side it doesn't really look like it but I'm wrinkling up under this eye quite a bit and it feels very dry and like I said brighter isn't always better so on this side I'm going to take a very peach color that's a little bit more similar to my skin tone but more importantly it being light isn't really what's doing the trick it's the camouflaging effect of the very orange undertone of this concealer that's gonna make the biggest difference if you can just see me smiling how this side looks much more smooth is increasing isn't as dark under eyes it almost looks like the same shade ish but I'll just show you on my hand here how different those shades are for the fact of it color correcting and now that it's semi dry I can go in and add a little bit more but what I actually do is move on to the rest of my makeup and I'll touch up my concealer after everything else is done but it's so crazy I don't know if you can see it but so the reason why you don't want to like powder right away, one, it makes it easier to add more concealer later on, and two, it just makes like a very thick layer under your eye that will form a dough. You're adding wet and dry ingredients together. So it's nice to kind of lightly dust it when it's dried a little bit, but I mean, that's just adding stuff that wasn't there before. Like Now, I know that there's like a thing saying that like, oh, fuller brows make you appear younger. If you're like me and you went through the phase of plucking out all your eyebrows, in the 2000s, 90s, whatever. It's hard to recreate full brows, and if you can, like that's awesome, go for it. But I just want to talk about where to position them and how to execute it so it looks good. And also, thin eyebrows don't make you look older. I think that there used to be more of like a black and white look of how your eyebrows should look, and now there's like every single type of brow. But I will say, if you're gonna make your eyebrows look thicker or thinner, you want to make it look balanced. For me, as I'm getting older, I'm not noticing that this part of my face is starting to drop like you know gravity is happening so I like to try to make as much space as possible okay so we're gonna do brows again same product on both sides I'm gonna do a thicker brow on this side again I'm not gonna do a bad job I'm just gonna show you the difference of placement so for this side I'm gonna do this is not gonna be like my regular brow routine I'm just gonna show you an example and we're gonna try and make our eyebrow appear fuller and fluffy and trendy so I'm keeping with my straight brow kind of vibe and I'm gonna just do the same thing like again This isn't like a brow tutorial. I'm just showing you the difference of what shape can do so instead of like how I 
Oh my goodness, I didn't know my head was down, sorry. I'm still learning how to be on here, you know what I mean? Instead of going lower like I did here and kind of filling in my arch, I'm going to, while maintaining a straight brow, just kind of go on top to make it wider if I want to. Look how much more awake lifted I look on this side versus the other side by making my brow thicker by going on top instead of underneath. And if you are going to make it thicker, I recommend something that is going to kind of blend into your your skin and your brow hair so something dark enough to camouflage the brow hair color so same thing we've pulled it out quite far lifted it looks kind of more awake this one's weighing me down a little bit still fierce still striking whatever I'm finding that this kind of makes me look more awake and bright-eyed bushy-tailed ready to start the day you know next up we have blush we're gonna go on the same kind of vibe where we're lifting instead of weighing ourselves down I have a cream blush I think powder blush is obviously awesome I love it still but we're just gonna talk about placement more so than anything okay so I like to do it kind of in a lifted motion and also just carry it around for this side I'm just gonna do again or I mean we put powder there but I'm just gonna do apples on cheeks give it a finger blend this actually works really well over the powder my natural like instinct is to lift it up so I kind of did that but this side I'm gonna tap it in give a nice flush you see how my makeup is kind of like moving and being more flexible with me versus this side it's kind of stuck in place and there's a contrast in texture like under my eye is super matte and she gets a little glossy now that I put this on. Everything is kind of bending and melting together on this side which I love. So now I'm going to move on to eyeshadow. I'm going to use this palette again because we used it in a, our last video and like I like to multi-use things. So again I really think you could do whatever eyeshadow that you want to do but some things are going to weigh you down more or maybe not suit your eye shape as much so whenever I do videos or I look at other people's videos for inspiration or models whatever I always try to recreate the vibe rather than imitating it exactly so like let's say you want to do like you know a sharp wing or angled eye or siren eye whatever and you saw it on somebody else who has a completely different like eye shape face look everything than you try to figure out what creates that vibe more so than using those exact products and the exact shape like what's gonna give you that vibe so I'm gonna do kind of like a cat eye look on both eyes but I'm gonna shape it differently so that you can see the difference of how I can change your face so I'm just gonna go into this brown oops oops right here sometimes I'll do these different shapes too just to create a different look depending on what I'm doing but this is the purpose of like refreshing our look so for this side I'm gonna start with eyeshadow on the bottom quite a dark color and I'm gonna wing it up and out in the same direction my brow is kind of going. This is giving a little bit more of like a doe eyed effect, nothing wrong with that. And I'm pulling this out a little bit more straight. Again, we're not doing a bad job, we're just showing how different shapes can affect the way your makeup looks. And on this side, I'm going to do another angled look. I'm gonna angle it up a little bit more. And again, this one isn't so much to show that it ages you or whatever. It's just showing different techniques that could possibly decorate so your eye shape looks. And blend it in just a little bit like I did on the other side. Again, same color, different placement, different amount applied. We can do a little bit of that eyeshadow shape underneath, especially Especially if you have problems with creasing and stuff, this can kind of disguise it and also make it worse. And just for all over, I'm going to take this shimmery shade here, right here. I'm going to tap it on lightly at first and then kind of swipe it. So it's nice and bright, again keeping in that idea that we want to add more space and brightness. For this one, I'm just going to swipe the whole thing like that. Instead of letting it kind of sink into the skin and tapping it in, I'm just swiping it all over. And then I'm going to take this lighter shade in the corner here and I'm just going to tap it lightly in the inner corner. This one I'm going to do a little bit more and I'm going to blend it down a bit. Another situation where we think more is more, but taking that kind of highlighted inner corner and letting it touch your eye bag area can kind of create more of like a pocket in that area. And I mean, you can still bring it down quite a bit on this side but I'm just finding a little bit of a lighter application keeps the eyes open you know okay so now that my makeup is kind of set it's not really really wet anymore my liquid products I'm gonna take a little bit of powder and my damp beauty blender I'm gonna lightly press it underneath my eye and between the brow and along the jawline 
and you just see the flexibility and my skin is a lot different I'm taking a lot less powder if you're very oily you might want to add a little bit more like I'm kind of oily up in here as well but I just like how lifted and luscious this looks even though it's the same products on both sides the application makes it look totally different my eyes look totally different let's move on to my favorite this is bronzer so when I'm applying bronzer I think that it's easy to kind of just go where you want to go like this and you're gonna get a little bit more of a blotchy application by being kind of rough like that. And this is something I've actually talked about in my videos for a very long time. Even if you're not putting product there, do the whole motion. So when you're doing bronzer, I like to aim for where we want the most product, which is going to be right in the middle of the hollow of my cheek there. But we're doing full strokes. So the brush isn't rigid and stopping at a certain point, starting at a certain point. It's kind of like flowing. So you can't see really where it starts and where it stops. You're just seeing it's shadowed in there. When you're doing it like this, you can see a stop here and you can see a to stop here like I said it's the same product so it's an awesome product we're just using it in two very different ways and I am also lifting it I like to just lift everything that's like a look that I like for myself creating more space and this isn't so much like aging myself is more outdating myself you know what I mean so we're gonna go around the forehead as well I always have a hard time with my forehead because these headbands get in the way kind of and I also like to take bronzer and put it through my brow just because it kind of lightens it sets it takes away any shine and just softens it up a little bit, which is a lot for me because I'm a very intense brow haver. So these are Kiss Lashes. I don't know which one's a oh, bombshell. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick this one on. I'm not uh, gonna measure it or anything. I'm just gonna let the whole thing be how it is. But for this side, I'm gonna actually cut and measure my eyelash in a way that's complementing to my eye and the whole look, which is more lifted and softer. You know what I mean? When I'm measuring a lash, I like to just kind of place it on and see what we're working with here. These are very nice lashes, but too much heaviness in here isn't gonna work. So I am going to, let's see here. I think I'm gonna cut a little bit off the end actually. So it sits a little bit more open. So I'm gonna cut off the last chunk here and then we'll glue them on. So I like to do my mascara before. So I'm gonna do it on this side. This is just a nice light mascara, nothing too crazy. First I get it on my eyelids. And on the other side I'm not, I'm just gonna go right in with the lash and I'll do it after so this is the uncut jams and it's not that it doesn't fit my eye it does but I'm just gonna show you the shape cutting the lash isn't always about like if it fits your eye so much it's just the look that you want and comfort really then we're gonna go in with the cut lash that we kind of created a shape with and I'm giving them a really nice pinch too just to blend my lash and the false lash together okay lips are a little bit trickier and I think they're kind of like a personal journey but don't even I might just do lip balm for this one because I think lips have their own texture, you have your own style, maybe like bright colors, maybe like neutral colors. Ha, ah, my fave. Saying it for years, this is the nude sticks. <sighs> Smells so good. The Hydra Peptide Lip Butter Shea and Avocado. I don't know why I don't know that because I use it all the time, but you know, usually you don't announce makeup products before you put them on in a restaurant. Last thing I'm gonna do is highlighter, and this is, again, you wanna do those big kind of swipes, but I'm just gonna like lightly dust some on my skin. This side I'm gonna put on quite a bit. I didn't even really contour my nose. But anyways, this eye looks very big. It's a very different type of makeup look, but it's also kind of an old school makeup look. And not old school, old school. I'm talking about like five, 10 years ago. So to update kind of your makeup look so you can still wear the same stuff, but maybe just have it more on like an updated version. I think this looks a little bit more modern and feels a lot more comfortable. And it's kind of uh, the way that I've updated my makeup routine throughout the years. And this is just some stuff. I have way more things that I've done to kind of update. We can get into that to another video because I don't want to be blabbing for too long. Anyways, I don't think either side looks bad. I just feel a little, one side looks a little bit more modern. My skin feels a lot better. The powder that I put on this side is a lot more flexible than it is on this side. This side of my face is much more lifted and I look more awake where this side is just giving a little bit more heaviness and tiredness a little bit. Even though it's cute, it's like kind of doe-eyed vibe, but it just, it's just weighing this side of my face down. You know what I mean? Where this side I look, woo, 
with bright eyed, bushy tail, ready to party. You know what I mean? My skin just feels a lot less tight, like I said. So, anyways, that's no nose contour. We just did like a light makeup going through some tips. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want more updating your makeup routine type of tips or stuff. Let me know. Let me know what you want to see. My plan for my next video is I want to do a submissive O-Face makeup look and a dominant O-Face makeup look, if you know what I mean. Because I feel like there's this kind of, what I'm noticing, the way people are kind of doing their makeup, it looks like they just got pleasured. You know what I mean? And I think that's a cool take to look like you just maybe had a really great time and that's your makeup from a dominant and a submissive side. So let me know if you want to see that because I think that's the next thing I'm going to do. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow. Love yourself. Stay pretty and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care.